Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Do you like the internet? Do you like the freedom the internet has? What if I told you that Google wants to implement digital rights management across your favorite websites? Now it's not just Google, I don't want to throw them under the bus, it's also Apple and it might also be Microsoft. Now to understand the internet is free and open and <laughs> We're never going to get back to the original, like, 1.0 days of the internet, the Napster era, the forums era. No, we're stuck in the days of commodification, consolidation, commodification, and the, and the ability for DRM to restrict how many options we have to browse the magical internet. Now, DRM isn't new. You've probably heard of something like Wide, uh, Widevine, which is a DRM, a content protection system for premium media. You ever try to watch Netflix and wonder, oh my God, why can't I record my screen? Well, it's because of technologies like Widevine, uh, which actually uh, basically uh, serve as sort of DRM protections for a lot of these streaming services out there, okay? Now, people would think that encrypted media extensions may be one thing, uh, but uh, no, 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 no. Today, we're actually looking at something known as web environment integrity. Now, you might have heard this buzzword on the news or something, so I'm here to help describe what it is. Basically, this is a DRM gatekeeper for the web. Now, to understand the entirety of uh, what this is, they actually have some use cases, okay? Some examples of scenarios where users depend on trust. Trust is the important word. See, when you're browsing the internet, you are a client, okay? You are sitting in front of your computer. When you open your web browser, you open a web client. Anytime you enter a web page, you're connecting to a server. This client-server relationship needs to have trust, otherwise bad things can happen. So here, Google describes things like users like visiting websites that are expensive to create and maintain, but they often want and need to do it without paying directly. These websites fund themselves with ads, but the advertisers can only afford to pay for humans to see the ads, rather than robots. This creates a need for human users to prove to websites that they are human, sometimes through tasks like challenges, logins, or CAPTCHAs, or basic things to prove that you are not a robot. Users want to know they are interacting with real people on social websites, but bad actors often want to promote posts with fake engagement. For example, to promote products or make a news story seem more important. So bots on the internet that make one small Twitter story that only three people care about, and all of a sudden they make it look like 300,000 people care about it, okay? One YouTube video that 100 actual people watched, but 100,000 bots also watched as well, looks a little bit deceptive compared to what it actually should be. Users playing a game on a website want to know whether other players are using software to, to, that enforces the game's rules. So they made it sound like obviously they're going up against fraud, they're going up against bots. They're trying to make the internet a more trustworthy place. Now, anytime DRM gets thrown in, it's like the gaming industry. We just want the game to to to. We just want the we just we we just want to prevent piracy. Okay. We just want to stop bad things. Or, or like anti-cheat providers where they're like, we just want to stop hackers until of course they start getting rootkit access into systems. And then it's all a bad situation. Then it's all the worst kind of double-edged sword. So Web Integrity API, websites will be able to request a token that attests key facts about the environment their client code is running in. For example, this API will show that a user is operating a web client on a secure Android device. Tampering with the attestation will be prevented by signing the tokens cryptographically. So to understand what's actually happening is Google is introducing or proposing that we introduce another step where they themselves become the arbiter of proving that you are a secure, proven human being anytime you communicate with certain websites on the internet. Now, for those of you who wonder how big Google is, remember Google Chrome at minimum has 70% of the world's users using a Google Chrome browser or a Chromium based browser. The other percentage there uses Safari on macOS, iPhone, whatever. And then a very small percentage uses Firefox. And of course, an even smaller percentage used to use Internet Explorer until Microsoft just decided to become Chromium, but more Microsoft-y, okay? That's pretty much how the Internet works. You got a whole bunch of browsers, but at the core of this, a lot of the browsers do share the same rendering engine and code base. 
For instance, if you use Google Chrome or you use Brave browser or you use Microsoft Edge, you're effectively using the same browser underneath the hood. Now, this isn't entirely new by Google standards. Apple has actually already started doing this with something they call private access tokens, which are powerful tools to prove when HTTP requests, web requests, are coming from legitimate devices without disclosing somebody's identity. This proof can help you reduce how often you show captures to people, and they're simple to set up and test. So to describe exactly how this situation works, how these tokens and these web protection integrity this web environment integrity stuff works. The way that it actually flows is like this. So you go to a browser, you go to a web page like www. I guess uh, google.com for instance, right? Now the idea here is the web server stops it. Re it refuses whatever requests you make. And then it's, in fact, it creates a challenge. So in this case, according to Apple, their version makes a private token challenge. Then of course, for the private token challenge, what happens is the browser recognizes it and sends part of that challenge token over to what is an attester, a, a, a validator of your system. And this validator could be Apple, it could be Google, it could be Microsoft, depending on which DRM solution you're using on the web. Now that company, Google, Apple, or Microsoft, looks at that challenge and then determines that you are a real and unmodified individual. So for instance, if your system uh, is modified, if your system is, is, is breaking that chain of trust, whatever it may be, Google, Apple, Microsoft could report that your system is not legitimate, your system may not even be human. Uh, there might be certain changes into the browser that you're using that could trip something and basically prevent you from being attested. Now, if you are attested and you are legitimate to browse the web, uh, basically, the signed token will be given back to you, you'll show it to the browser, and then you'll be let into the website, okay? It's a very quick process, but it's a process that involves some of the biggest companies in the world having more power than they should. So again, the idea here is attestation, okay? And that's something that Google is brought up into this situation. They've addressed privacy scenarios. They've addressed a lot of things. But at the core of it, what we all know that this technology allows people to do is, uh, again, restrict and basically have further control on how you use the internet. Now, the reason why Google is brought up into the forefront is, like I said earlier, a majority of the world uses Google Chrome's browser. So if Google wants to push something onto the internet that actually, if you read it, if you actually understand it, this is very beneficial for increasing, you know, things like ad sales and whatnot too. For the sole reason that, let's say for instance, that uh, the website that you were going to doesn't want people to have ad block or something. Now, WEI, from what I understand and what I read, if you add things like ad blockers or you start implementing these ad blocking solutions, the actual situation may lead to you being, uh, you know, uh, unverified. Your system not being allowed to access certain websites because you're using ad blocking solutions. This is like a fucking complete death knell to the way that we secure our computers, to the way that we browse the internet. It might even stop certain extensions from some of the largest web pages in the world, as far as from what I've read. Feel free to correct me, obviously people, this is a very complicated subject. So again, if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me on the situation. I've read this a fair bit, and this is what it sounds like to me and from a lot of other researchers on the internet. Now to understand, attestation has some bad points. For instance, you can only use approved clients, which again, if you think about it, is really terrible for people who are on more unconventional operating systems. If you're on Windows or you're on Mac, then, or, or Android or, or, or iOS, you'll probably be fine. But if you're a Linux user like me, uh, especially if you have like, you know, unique kernels and whatnot, you may end up being thrown out of the pool because your system may not be considered verifiable. The other thing is when it comes to your own device, one of the problems is, uh, for instance, using modified software, that again may not be considered as legitimate, all right? Even if you're not doing anything shady with it, websites can choose to kick you out if you're using things like a rooted Android device or whatnot, or maybe even like a jailbroken iOS device, uh, if, that's, uh, if that's still even a thing. The other situation is, is down the road, you know, far down the road, there could be a situation where devices that are outside like official support windows may end up being thrown out to the wind. 
Maybe, like I said earlier, there might be certain websites, certain places where they'll say, hey, you got ad block extensions? Get the fuck out of here. And a lot of people in the world use ad blocks. I've even said I'm okay with things like ad blocks because I know how dangerous and malicious certain malvertising and ads can be. Again, if you want to support your creator, please whitelist their, them in your, in your ad block settings. But let's get back to the matter here. Now, at the end of the day, this is not designed necessarily by these companies to be overly malicious. At the end of the day, bots and fraudulent activity are bad for the internet too, okay? So you need to have some balancing act in the situation. But from what I've read with WEI, it really seems like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. In the, in the actual like quest to stop ads and fraudulent activity, we're now implementing the ability to basically add DRM to the web. And because of how popular Google's Chrome is, it's gonna be something that will be adopted relatively quickly over time. To understand, most modern operating systems already have things like TPNs, already have a lot of these you know, security uh, you know, factors in place. So for the average user, you know, who's pretty much used to the fact that their average box is like a, you know, a highly controlled environment, they might be okay with it. But to power users like me, and you know, to some of you watching this video, this is a pretty bad thing for us going forward. Again, the more control these big companies have over our web browsing, the worse it actually is in the long term for a healthy, free, and open internet. Now, even other browsers like Brave, which I use Brave primarily, this is what I use. I use this browser, I'm not sponsored by Brave. Uh, you know, aside from all the crypto crap and the advertising that they have in that regard, I tend to consider this one of the best Chromium browsers out there. And even they've said web environment integrity, locking down the web. Brave strongly opposes Google's web environment integrity proposal, as with many Google's recent changes and proposals regarding the web. Web environment integrity would move power away from users and towards large websites, including the websites Google itself runs. Although Brave uses Chromium, Brave browsers do not and will not include WEI. So even if you use Brave, you're already kicked out of the curb. But again, I'm sticking to Brave and I'm sticking to my guns, all right? I, the, I, the last thing I'm going to be doing is using actual Google Chrome. And of course, WEI's proposal intentionally shifts power away from users, again, towards those large websites and advertisers. It's just the latest step in a terrible direction Google is pushing for the web. And again, it's not just Google, it's Apple, and it's also Microsoft as well inside this entire hodgepodge of fucking taking away our goddamn rights on the internet, dude. So again, to remind you, if this proposal takes over the internet over time, you know, there could be a chance that if you run custom operating systems, you'll probably be blocked from the internet for certain websites. Uh, you have a uh, rooted Android device or a jailbroken iPhone or something, might even get blocked, who knows? Uh, do you not have like the latest updates on your system? Well, your system might be blocked from accessing certain websites if, if, if it's not granted a token. Uh, for instance, are you allowing your device to access microphones or camera permissions? Uh, no? Well, you might be just banned from, or, or you know, restricted from accessing the website. And what I do fear is down the road, if for certain applications like banking services, what if you're tripped or tripping a flag and you basically are registered as a suspicious user anyways? Maybe we can get by this with virtual machines, but given how invasive this DRM solution is, uh, VMs might not even be enough, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wild world we go into. I know this video might've been dry, a little bit dry technically, but this is something that if you're not technically adept, hopefully you understood why this is more trouble than it's actually worth, okay? Yes, fraud, bots, bad on the internet, okay? But DRM is never the solution for anything. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you care, do you not? I really, I, I do care, okay? But I wanna know what the normie thinks after they heard me talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it, I am out.